This is an instructional video for the Roth and Beeler Engineering Model 1680 remote firing system. I'm going to show you some of the advanced user functions, uh, namely the sequential firing, the mesh network, and the transmit power level adjustment. So to show you what the sequential firing is, I'm going to go ahead and fire these. I'll show you what it is. Um, there's actually eight different timings you can set between the units all the way from a half second on up to four seconds. Okay, so they're all armed and I'll go ahead and fire them. This will be sequential set for half second. So that's the half second sequential. It fires with the lowest numbered remote, number one first, and then two, three, and four. If three's not in, in the loop, then it has the same timing uh, with all the remaining units, but always in the order of the lowest remote first. So now I'm going to show you how to adjust that. First we turn the controller off and I hold the number four button and turn it on. And you notice that the number four has the green ready light on. And green means that it's enabled. I'm going to hit the disarm button and you see that the light blinks. So now it's in the program mode. If I was to push the number four again, it goes to red, which would be turned off. And green is on, or enabled and disabled. So I'm going to leave it enabled. If I push this again, you see the yellow select light on number one is blinking. And that's the half second uh, programming right there. If I change it to two, that would be one second, three is one and a half seconds, four is two seconds, five is two and a half seconds, six is three, seven is three and a half, and eight is four second timing. So now I've changed, I can change the on and off and I can change the timing at that point. When I'm all done choosing what I want, I hit my status button See the light stop blinking and that's locked in. Now I just turn it off and on. Let's do a status check. Look good and let's arm them up. So we had that set for four seconds. Okay, now this will be firing. Okay, so that was sequential four seconds. Now I'll turn it off. And let's turn, turn off the function totally. So hold the four button on. And my green light's on. Let's hit the disarm button. And I toggle that to red. And then lock it in. And cycle my power. So now they should all fire at the same time. Okay, should be all at once. There we go. Okay, so just a, a quick review of that. I push and hold the four button, turn it on, and hit my disarm for programming mode. I'm going to put it back to uh, my on position. I push it again, and then I can set my timing. I'll set it back to half second. Lock it in with the status and cycle my power. And that's how you turn it on, turn it off, and set the timing. The next function 
is the mesh network. And let's turn this off. That one happens to be the seven button. I turn it on and you see that it's green. That means it's already in mesh network now. There is no other timing issues or anything on that. So this is the only thing that can change. And again, I can turn it to red for off or green for on. And the mesh network, uh, every one of the remotes can act like a repeater. So uh, the controller can send a message to number one. Number one then will uh, send a message to one of the other remotes, probably number two, and then on to number three and number four. So I can space this around a building, for instance, and the signal will go around following the breadcrumbs around the building instead of having to go through the building or up and over a hill or any of the uh, blockage in the signal. And I can extend the range in a straight line, too, in the same way. I'm going to lock that in to on and cycle my power again. Okay, so there's not much more to demonstrate on the mesh network. Uh, it's kind of invisible to the user. We typically leave that in the on position. That seems to be the, uh, the best mode for it. Um, so it can add a little bit of time in some of the uh, link-ups, but uh, most of the time it's invisible to the user. The next mode is the RF transmit power. So the RF transmit power can take a lot of battery. Um, so if you wanted to conserve some battery, you can go all the way from a tenth of a watt to half a watt to one watt uh, on the transmit power. Typically, we leave it in the half watt. Um, one watt doesn't do a lot more uh, for you as far as distance, maybe a little bit more in penetration capability. Tenth watt is good for straight line use. If you're just firing a disruptor or uh, something that's close in, you could use the tenth watt. So that's activated with the number eight. So I'll hold the eight button, turn it on. In this case, you see it's set to number two position. So in this case, it's uh, just RF power only. So there's uh, number two is one watt. Number one would be a tenth watt. And number three is a full one watt. So if I leave it on the one watt and lock it in with my status, and cycle my power, just like all the other user functions. So now when I'm transmitting, I'll be transmitting with a full one watt. Again, I can turn it off, push my number eight button and turn it on. And it says that it's in position number three, which is one watt. Hit my disarm button and then select number one or two or three. Let's leave it in number one. Lock it in and cycle my power. So now I'm operating in the tenth watt mode. So I'm going to set it back to where it was. Just as a quick example, that's tenth of a watt. I'm going to set it back to half watt where I like to leave it, and that's where you're, where it is when it comes out of the factory also. You know, lock it in and cycle my power. And that's the three main advanced user functions of the system. We tried to make it simple. Uh, this is the way it is as of December 10th, 2017. So that should do it. If I remember right, we had that set for uh, sequential firing. So we'll do one more shot here. Okay, there it is. We'll fire. Thank you.